So we'll establish a finger groove on the outside base, finger touching wheel head, so we don't have all the clay wasted out there. And the first lift I do a little bit differently than lift two and three. I take my left thumb and right middle finger in a vice-like grip to lift up. Notice how my right hand is there for support, and I'm lifting 25% of the clay. No more, no less. Now, this is something I want you all to practice at home to friends and family who's watching this. I use my middle fingers. You could use your index fingers. Just make a decision. Stick with it. Be consistent. Take a remote control, an ink pen, or something and put it between your fingers and hold it. That is the key to lifting on the potter's wheel. Because if your fingers are not parallel, it will fall, just as this clay will cause it to flutter and collapse. If your fingers are too high and too low, same thing. Once again, you want your fingers basically parallel. Ideally, if you're making a cylinder, you want your right outside finger an eighth of an inch lower to slightly push the clay in, not too much. If you're making a bowl shape, not in this case, you want your left middle finger to slightly push out. Now it's going to be very common for beginners to push the clay out, but we want the self-discipline of making a cylinder first. So you want to work vertically, but slight movements inward. So we did the first lift, now we're going to do the second lift. Once again, my middle finger is the longest, these fingers for support, and I'm using my fingertips. The clay is hitting off my fingertips like this. I don't want anyone using the edges of your fingers. You can make a six inch pot with that, but to limit you on down the line when you make taller forms. So only use your finger fingertips and their tactile receptors. Avoid edges. Wet hands, lubricate pot, step four, part B. Now breathing is very important at this stage. I generally like to exhale when I lift. So no sense in holding your breath. Okay, and before I do the third lift, I want to show you a rib. I prefer the metal ones myself. But these are great because they compress the clay and later they can get rid of the finger rings. But the important thing is, is not to gouge the clay to go with it. Alright, now we're going to do the third and final lift. You know how uh, Homer Simpson grabs Bart Simpson by the throat? Why are you little? Well, that's kind of like, uh, like collaring here. So you can also give the piece a nice uh, shape later on, which I'm not going to show you today because today it's all about the cylinder. So I'll just get rid of those little finger rings there. Tap positive and negative force. The clay is pushing in. Left hand is on the inside for support. I'm sure there's going to be something, little minor details I'm forgetting, but uh, there are some things I wrote down that I forgot to say, so uh, here they go. Uh, finger rings. Uh, one finger ring per rotation of the wheel is a good speed. If your hand is going up a little too slow, that's okay because all the clay is getting worked. However, if your hand moves up too fast, not all the clay is getting worked uh, evenly and that'll be uh, a lumpy pot. A lumpy pot is good later on, but not at this time. And I don't want you to play it safe. Uh, so you get to only say one, and that's a final one of the day. So every time that you're practicing, you practice until the piece collapses, 
then you cut it open with the wire tool and observe it. See, it's all based on cause and effect. Your hands are the cause, and this piece is the effect. Because even if you're in school, you're not going to have some teacher looking over your shoulder every moment. You're going to have to learn some things yourself. So just learn why the piece collapsed, and you can learn from that. And uh, let's uh, trim the pot up a little bit. We'll take the wooden tool with both hands, both elbows on my thighs, trim at a slight angle. Then we'll take the wire tool, stretch it out, wrap it around your fingers, make it nice and snug. You don't want any slack in it, nice and snug. Start away from the piece, have the wheel going really slight, follow all the way through these four points. You dry them, flip your hands over, and there is your <coughs> finished piece. Now, you do not want to use pot lifters. Pot lifters are for wimps. Now, if you're at a school or community center, no one's around, you take those pot lifters and bend them to the shape of extinct animals or whatever, because the beauty of ceramics is the fingerprints, the off-centeredness, and that's... The Don't think of all unsuccessful pieces as failures. See them as learning experiences. So, some common flaws that you're going to encounter, and uh, I'm doing this by throwing off the hump. That's where you take uh, large amounts of clay and you could cut it able to teach you that. All right, so for coning, uh, one of the biggest flaws people do is they don't have their hand at vertical, they're undercutting. So you'll find yourself bleh, undercutting the top will come off. That is a flaw that will happen to everyone at least once. So hand up, no good. Uh, when you're bringing the clay down, with your right elbow inside your thigh, not having your left thumb in the center. Sometimes people have a veer off and the clay will not be centered. Always keep your left thumb in the center. Even if you're doing the karate chop method or something else, always stay in the eye of the hurricane. Establishing the hole. Some beginners will do it with one hand, very important left hand for support. Opening up, the biggest common flaw is people are opening up too far. Clay lifts. Once again, every one of these mistakes is going to happen to you, which is good, because then you'll know how to encounter it in the future. For lifting, it has many flaws. Some such as flaring out, which is good if you want to make a bowl, but when you're making a cylinder, you want to push slightly inwards. Show that self-control, show that discipline. And the number one mistake people make when lifting a pot is squeezing. What happens, you want nice, fluid, upward movement. However, when people aren't moving up, their mind compensates that by squeezing. And that's the last thing you want. You want a nice, vice-like grip that's moving up. However, whenever I'm moving up and I stop, I have a natural tendency to squeeze. So, as long as you could see your mistake and learn from it, don't think of it as a mistake. I know, it's not like some 1951, you know, movie clip or whatever. <coughs> okay. Let me repeat myself. You're still in practice mode. Lift each piece until it's paper thin and collapses. The worst thing you do at this point is be conservative and save your pots. You'll have a lifetime for that later. When you can take your best wheel made piece and destroy it and laugh because you know you can make another in two minutes, you're ready to use your imagination on the potter's wheel. Everything in life is easy 
or uncomplicated. The potter's wheel can be both. It's up to you and the amount of self-discipline you have. And what I love most about self-discipline is you can have as much or as little as you'd like. Have fun.